Robotics are changing every aspect of our lives. Join us on this behind the scenes journey for a glimpse of the future of robotics and automation. We'll experience how these technologies are set to transform our world. This historic building in Somerville, Massachusetts was once a post office, but today, a very different type of company makes this space their home. The co-founders of Right Hand Robotics met after winning a DARPA contest to build the best gripping system to handle explosive devices. Now their work has an entirely new use case, retail. Here we're at the Right Hand Robotics Lab to get a behind the scenes look at this new technology. Applying advanced robotics to supply chain and warehousing, Right Hand Robotics is developing an innovative piece-picking solution that could reshape how grocery retailers fulfill online orders. They started by tackling the complex task of mimicking an actual human hand. Leif Gentoft, the co-founder on the mechanics of the robotic hand. Instead of building a hand that has 20 different motors, one for each joint, you have to build them like a human hand works. You've got a single tendon that runs from the fingertip all the way up to the forearm, and there's a smart mechanism, so the fingers shape themselves to the shape of the item. Advancements in computer vision and machine learning are now allowing robots to make the kinds of decisions needed to pick up just about any product. The big challenge with building a piece-picking robot is the range of items. In a typical warehouse, you might have as many as 50,000 different SKUs or more. Each of them looks different, different weight, different shape, different packaging, different texture. We use a combination of machine learning and sensor feedback so that every time you see an item, you can make a plan as the best way to pick it up. Robots are faced with new products all the time in often difficult to predict sequences. They need to be able to reliably pick a wide range of products at high speed. Developing a machine with the skills and intelligence to do this isn't easy. When you're designing a picking system, you have to understand how the gripper works to understand where to see where it should be used. In our case, we use a combination of a suction cup and these smart fingers working together to handle a wide range of items. The most challenging part of the system is the integration of all these different parts into a whole that works well. Other providers have built a vision-only system or a gripper-only system. But the question is how to create a smart, comprehensive solution that can do both simultaneously. In the grocery environment, robots need to pick up, scan, and transfer items that can be easy to damage or crush. Developing a sensitive enough robotic grip has long been thought impossible, but we're getting closer every day. One of the biggest misconceptions about robots right now is that they're good at doing the same things that people are and are rapidly advancing in the same direction. People are very good at thinking intelligently about cause and effects and debugging situations. Robots are very good at working predictably on mundane tasks again and again and again. So, are robots and humans set to rule the world together? Let's see how this concept is coming to life at a supermarket in Miami, Florida. Fulfilling online grocery orders is costly, eating into retailers' already thin margins. Robots are an expensive upfront investment, but are they a long-term solution to this challenge? Some grocery retailers have built dedicated fulfillment centers for online orders. Here we visit Takeoff Technologies to see how they built a micro-fulfillment center connected to a retailer's store. In Miami, Takeoff Technologies has partnered with Sedano's Supermarkets to test the technology, the first of its kind. Welcome to the back of the supermarket. This is where we place the automation. We call it the micro-fulfillment facility. The whole idea of the micro-fulfillment is to use automation right at the store to assemble online orders. When a customer places an order online or through a mobile app and the order is received, the Fulfillment Center's automated system sends products to the picking station, where an employee takes out the items, bags them, and brings them outside to the customers for pickup. Instead of an item being picked every 60 seconds with manual pickers in the store, an item is picked every six seconds. Still, some items cannot go through the system. For items too large, like a pack of bottled water or paper towels, 
the store needs to use manual picking with wearable inventory devices. It can take between four to five months to deploy a micro-fulfillment center. These can either be built as a standalone location or as an extension of an existing store. At Sedano's, the micro-fulfillment center is located in an area that used to be the grocery store's deli. Sedano's is still operating a standard walk-in grocery in the front of the house, but it brought on new staff to operate the fulfillment centers given the growth in online sales. Of course, automation is going to cause personnel changes as it progresses. Chief Business Officer Kurt Avalon explains the considerations takeoff technologies made when introducing micro-fulfillment to the store. We needed to make the processes and the interfaces to our software simple enough so that the store team felt very comfortable when we introduced this new project to their life. As online grocery shopping becomes increasingly common, solutions that automate and speed up the fulfillment process are gaining momentum. While grocery stores like Sedano's are being transformed behind the scenes, other robotics companies are also contributing to greater efficiency in the store itself. We'll see how retailers are able to get smarter through new robotics technology that helps them manage store inventory in real time. With a nickname like the Iron City, it is fitting that Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, with its history of steel production, should be at the center of the robotic revolution. Sarjun Skaff, co-founder and CTO of Bossa Nova Robotics. Why are we in Pittsburgh? Short answer is Carnegie Mellon University. It's the source of our talent, our technology, what we call our strategic depth. Carnegie Mellon really was at the birth of the self-driving car revolution and we apply the same technologies in stores. With a sizable office in the Strip District, in an area now known as Robotics Row, Bossa Nova Robotics focuses on monitoring inventory through automated shelf scanning. Their machines are already rolling through aisles of retailers around the country. We have an autonomous robot that rolls down the aisle, much like a, an indoor self-driving car. It moves at a very measured pace, about 0.5 miles per hour. And it points a battery of 15 cameras at the shelf. So as it rolls down the aisle, it sweeps the shelf and captures all the information we need to analyze on shelf inventory. From there, it's processed in real time to notify associates which shelves need to be restocked. Every time the robot rolls down the aisle, it collects 20 gigabytes of 2D and 3D images. And then we compress them and stitch them into a single aisle-long panorama that we send to the cloud for AI processing. In the cloud, we analyze the data captured by the robot to figure out all the inventory problems. Is a product out of stock? Is it in low stock? Where is it located? We can actually zoom in and read the barcode on every shelf label. Early on, our biggest challenge was to really figure out how a robot can navigate completely autonomously around shoppers who have never seen a robot before, yet maintaining this respectful distance and never deterring a shopper from entering it. To roll out a technology like this, actually retailers do not need to modify their store. The robot will simply adapt to it but the opportunity is to redesign the way they operate the store to go from a schedule-driven process to a completely data-driven process. As soon as the shift starts, you know what problems to solve and you allocate people based on priorities. We've been designing this solution for six years and iterating multiple times along the way. And when we first started, we thought a single camera on a small robot would do the job. And we quickly learned that actually we needed to read the content of every shelf label. So we built a tall robot with 15 cameras that could zoom in anywhere on the shelf and read the barcode. And also look at the back of every shelf so we never mistaken a low stock for an out of stock. So what does the future of robotics look like? One thing's for sure, we're only at the very beginning. Kids walk up to me and say, what do you do? And I say, I build robots. 
and they say, wow, that's so cool. And I really feel technology has the power to inspire a new generation of scientists, engineers, and technologists, and the future is really bright. Thank you for joining us. Learn about robotics, automation, and more in our exhibit hall. And join us back in Las Vegas for our next event, Shop Talk, in March.